It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. What a job. With £200 each. You with me? A classic car. Buckle up. And a gold to scar Britain for antiques. Oh, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners. Yes. And valiant losers. So, will it be the high road to glory <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Have a good trip. <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Hail Caledonia. Our pair of professional auctioneers, Charles Hanson and Anita Manning, continue their capers careering about the scenic capital of Scotia in that 1972 Triumph Stag. Edinburgh, like Rome, has seven hills. <laughs> That's a lot of ups and downs, just like the Antiques Road Trip, but fun. It can be a bit like snakes and ladders. S you can go up and you can come down. Anita. A roller coaster. Anita, I'm feeling slippy. <laughs> Where's that clutch control gone? <laughs> I'm not secure. I'm slipping a bit here. Oh, no. Huh. While it's true that Charles did indeed do some backsliding earlier in the trip, he actually climbed back into profit last time and starts out today with £267.74. While Anita has stayed steady on her feet and kept well ahead, doubling her original stake to land her with £410 for this time. I cannot believe it. You have hit the £400 barrier and a bit more. I'm languishing a long way back. We're both courageous. We both take a chance. Charles and Anita set forth from Kilbarken and are touring the B roads on both sides of the border before a last auction in North Shields. I go to auction burning brightly to either fly high or collapse in your arms. Oh, and Charlie. that is the game, Anita. My heart is full. My wee Scottish heart is full. You have conquered Scotland and you have conquered my heart. This time, their journey will take them through the Scottish borders before auction at Kinbuck, Stirlingshire. But first, Edinburgh. Anita and Charles are driving through Holyrood Park this morning, skirting the slopes, locks and cliffs of Arthur's Seat. There we go. On this oh. gorgeous morning. What a beautiful spot. And you're looking mustard. As keen as mustard is. <laughs> OK. Bye-bye, <laughs> darling. Later. Bye, have a good day. <laughs> While Charles heads to his first shop, Anita's making her way on foot over the causeway to her first emporium of the day, the Courtyard Antiques. Hi, I'm Anita. Pleased to meet you, Anita. This is the most amazing, most visually extraordinary shop that oh. I've been in for a long time. Thank you. Quite an eclectic array of the antique and vintage here. This is like the biggest toy shop in the world. It's all about fun. <laughs> hey, Trigger. Trot on, doll. What's upstairs? Planes, boats, all a bit like boys' toys. But I found this fabulous girl's tricycle. It's called the Sky Princess, and I think it's an American bike. It's a bit like a kid's Cadillac. It's a wee bit dear at £190 because I'm taking it to auction and this will have a very restricted market. Time to summon Lewis. I found a right. girly toy with these marvellous uh, mudguards here, which are a bit like, I suppose it's a bit space agey. I thought it would be American, am I right there? It's American, yeah. Uh, what sort of period? I think it could be anywhere from the 40s to the 60s, really. I would like to be paying in the region of 80 to 100 because we've got some wee bits missing here. Well, if we could agree on 100, I would be quite happy. 100. Let's go for it. Perfect. I can't resist Thank it. Thank you so much. I wonder, will it hold me? I think it would, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes. I am absolutely delighted with this yep. and I'm going to keep on looking. Great. Thank you so much. With a lighter purse, after that first buy, we'll leave her to carry on trawling. Time to catch up with Charles, who's on his way across Edinburgh to Bruntsfield, one time home of Muriel Spark, who wrote The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie. He's expected at his first shop by owner Anna and her dog, the eponymous Tippy. Good girl. Hi there. Good morning. How are you on this fine 
Very Morning well. In Edinburgh. You. What a lovely shop. Thank you. This yeah. is Tippy. Hello, Tippy. Good to see you. It's, yeah, maybe uh... Tippy can just tip the scales in my favour. <laughs> yes. There we go. Go on, sniff out those bargains. Dear, oh dear. Oh, what's Anna got there? To the unassuming, it might be a sewing box with a lid to open up, but would you believe it? It's true, isn't it? Inside, look at that. <laughs> There's your vacuum cleaner. And I love it. Imagine uh, how much room that could free up under your stairs. Every Saturday afternoon, I do, I do the hoovering. You could put Tim Wondercott under the stairs That's if it. you got one of those. <laughs> put me under the stairs? It's an amazing object, but it's not for me. I've never seen one before. I've made my day, thank you. So, what might you hoover up? Ah, a wooden vase. Looks Georgian. I quite like this form. It's an ovoid outline with a cover on a circular pedestal. Um, how much could that be? Has it come somewhere local or...? It has, actually. Um, it was a local um, house that I cleared. Um, what do you reckon, Tippy? £15? Yeah. The art of antiques is handling, and sometimes you're best to go into a shop, go into an auction, and just handle that tactile nature of what the object gives off. And this doesn't just have a great handle, it glows as well. Your best price, £15. Yes. I'm going to say, Tippy, look at me. I'm going to say, going, going, give me a paw. Gone. Thank you very much. Time to pause now. <laughs> who writes this stuff? And catch up with Anita, who's still on the hunt across town. Bless her. Isn't this just absolutely fabulous? It's a weighing machine that tells your fortune. It was designed by Joseph Sinnell, an Australian architect who lived in America, and he would have designed this type of machine for a prestigious building, like the Empire State Building. The shape is Art Deco, the materials are Art Deco. I'm going to step on it and see what happens. Right. Not willing to take a risk if you see the slightest chance of losing. Well, maybe that's true. As for the weight, well, can't find that. Maybe just as well. Ah, she's worth her weight in gold, that woman. Now, anything else here? I love Art Nouveau, and this spirit kettle here is an example of probably Austrian Art Nouveau, and I'm very fond of that period and that area. Spirit kettles date back to the days of Queen Anne. She used a burner to maintain a supply of hot water for topping up the teapot at elaborate tea parties. There's no price on this one, so, Lewis? Lewis, I really like this spirit kettle. I think that it's probably Austrian Art Nouveau. Would you yes, agree fine. with me? What is the very, very, very best that you can do? The very, 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 very best is 120. 120. I'm going to go for it. That's great. Thank, thank you very much. No, thank you. So 120 for the kettle, 100 for the bike. Yep. 220 pounds. Yep. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Pleasure. One princess. Just don't ride it, eh? Oh, oh no. Here we go. Charlie can keep the stag. <laughs> on your bike, hen, as they say in Glasgow. Now, any advance on the mahogany vase over at Bruntsfield? I'm a man who likes classical ornament. And here you've got the Greek key on this very nice little, I suppose, perhaps it looks like the part of a, of a sideboard. And the quality of the mahogany says to me it's quite old. How much is it? For you, 75. It's just a unit, isn't it? Been here a while? No. It's just, I, I just think it's slightly out of my price range, and that'll be your best price. 50. <laughs> best price. Really? There's just something about it. That's all I'm going to say. I almost didn't need a close look at it, Anna, because I just love the form. Ah! We've got the moulding all the way round, which shows to me neither side was, Taken. was within. I feel like I'm Paul Daniels doing a little magic trick here. This is a lovely, I think, 1820s in the manner of Gillows. 
in the manner of Thomas Hope, it's Grecian, it's Greek revival, it's rich regency, it could be English, but my goodness me, it's small and has style. And I quite like it. And sometimes when you're a passionate antique enthusiast, you can't say no. As Miss Brodie said, for those who like that sort of thing, that is the sort of thing they like. Uh, so, it's a deal at £65 for the vase and the cabinet. Is he going off with a dog? Pleasure doing business. How much is she? Priceless. <laughs> I thought so. I'll put you down. There we go. Have a good day, Tippy. Look after your mum. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye. I love it. I'm really happy. The next port of call for Anita is on the north side of Edinburgh, where the city stretches down to the River Forth and the harbours of Leith, Newhaven and Granton. She's bound for Lady Haig's factory, where 40 ex-servicemen, many disabled, make the poppies for Armistice Day, symbols of remembrance and hope. She's meeting employee and former Scots guard, Arthur Dyke. Hello, I'm Hello, Anita. Anita. I'm Martha. Oh, nice to lovely meet you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So this is where millions of remembrance poppies, Scottish remembrance poppies, poppies uh -huh. are made every year. We make 5.2 million poppies, but we make them all by hand. Poppies are making, are going to make money to help service men and women and their families. Yeah. So we're all very proud to work here. The first use of the poppy as a poignant war motif was in 1915 in words written by a Canadian army doctor, John McRae. He wrote a very famous poem in Flanders Fields, and from that poem, we now have the poppy. And this is the third verse from the poem. Would you like Can to? Can I read it? I'm certain. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. It's very moving. Very moving poem. So that was our first reference yes. to the poppy. poppy. Yes. This factory was set up in 1926 by Lady Haig, five years after poppies were worn for the first time. It was to produce poppies for Scotland because the factory set up in England to employ war veterans in 1922 couldn't keep up with the demand. But I believe the Scottish mm -hmm. poppies are different from the English poppies. Oh, right totally there? different, totally <laughs> different. Our poppy looks like a poppy. Uh-huh. You know, it's got the four petals. The English poppies get two petals and a green leaf, but it all goes back to that time where he just wanted to do things different. What did it done her way? The Scottish way. The Scottish way. The poppy factory's mission is as important today as it was in 1926. Well, keeping the men in a job, plus the poppies that they make, bring in about two and a half million pounds wow. to help out service men and women That's every sweet. year. Arthur, could I have a go at making poppies? Certainly you can. Come this way and we'll get you to make a poppy. Oh. John is a veteran who served in the Royal Army Ordnance Corps. All you do is press it down, okay. add it, right, and then okay. put your black stud on top. That is it. And you made your first poppy. Tell me, John, how many poppies do you make a day? Um, on an average, about two and a half thousand. That is absolutely wonderful. And how long have you worked here? A um, little over five years now. The camaraderie in the factory is good and uh, it helps me. I suffer with my nerves. I think that's great. All the guys are nice. Well, I hope so. We try to be. <laughs> I've been chatting everybody up. Have you? <laughs> that is wicked. <laughs> But to do 10,000 in a week, I don't think I would... Uh, I'd need to do a lot of practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bet. Charles is on his way across the city now, buoyed up with two purchases already under his belt. I feel as though I've got a wand in my hand today and I'm going to land on something that will say, look at me, I'm the gold, that will turn to a huge profit and finally see me leap over Miss Manning. At that moment, that would be more of a high jump. But we salute your optimism, sir. Charles is steering northwards. Now, to his second shop of the day. Perfect. Edinburgh Antique Centre, owned by Campbell. Mr Campbell. Charles, nice to meet you. Have you anything really early or really interesting? 
that may have just have landed. Well, we have got a new dealer in who does a lot of ceramic tea balls, uh, especially the early ones. Oh, really? The 1790s onwards. So. Oh, really? Are they, are they nearby? They certainly are. They just Come and show me. So this is, this is basically the history of tea drinking going back to around 1810. Yep, yep, certainly is. I mean, there's earlier ones as well, and this is just basically his collection that he's looking to get rid of at the moment. Good for him. Straight away, there's a, a tea ball and saucer over here. It's cracked, but what's interesting is actually an armorial tea ball and saucer. So rather than being middle class 1830, it's a Chinese tea ball and saucer which carries a coat of arms for an important British family, and that puts into a different league. And amazingly, it's only £11 for something from probably circa 1760. Is that pretty? So, sadly, someone drunk too much tea and tried to eat the tea ball as well. Yep. But it's full of rich tea history. Certainly. And for me, it's good to brew. How much could it be? We can do it for you for nine. Made 240 years ago. For nine pounds, it would be rude to say no. Yes. Going, going, go. I'll take it. I'll put it on your counter. I shall Thanks, take it. Campbell. God, it's like picking sweets. It's so easy. It is. <laughs> <laughs> You're in Edinburgh. You'll have had your tea. Now, is it time for a dance? What is Charles up to? Perhaps a little lie down. Why not? Some lovely novelty silver and just talking novelty silver. I do like that. It's a almost a stoneware body. Yeah. Because what do you call this sport? Uh, curling. 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 I like this because obviously number one, it's got some age. We can see on the foot rim here good signs of honest wear. More than that, it's decorative, serving the interests of a sporting collector. But of course, it's got the dual purpose of not just being decorative, also being an inkwell. It is. And on the inside, uh, maybe it's missing its glass liner, but what's nice is you've got hints of the old ink and just general wear and tear. Campbell, I quite like this. How much could that be? It's priced at 39. 39. We could do that for, say, we'll do it for 30. Really? We could do that for 30. Yeah. I'm going to say to you, Campbell, it's a definite maybe. Certainly. So if you can look after it... I will. ...and I will then report back to you shortly. Certainly. Thank you very much. No That's problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Like that. It looks like somebody has been antiquing far too long. I'm doing OK. Quite like that. 250. Time is marching on, Charles. Make your mind up. To curl or not to curl? That'd be the question. It is now. <laughs> and my thought is, for £30, I'll play the game. Perfect. I'll take it as well. That's nine for the teacup and saucer and 30 for the curling stone inkwell. And there you are, sir. And it's amazing what you can buy for £39. I am so grateful You've got for my... I hope so. Yeah. It's no problem. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Job done. Time to call it a day and collect Anita and get some supper. How about some haggis? I fancy a haggis, Anita. <laughs> what exactly is a haggis? Well, it's uh, a lot of sort of stuff all jumbled up in a sheep's stomach. Well, maybe not so much, Anita. <laughs> Chips all round them. <laughs> bon appétit and a nighty night. No time for slumbering on the antique road trip. Our experts are up at the crack of dawn and are off roving the beautiful roads of the borders. Charlie, let's stop. There's a lovely wee burn down there. Pull in here now. Yeah. Come on, pull in here, quick. Take in this wonderful wilderness. What's the burn? Let's see if there's yeah. some trout. Little stream. Some old trout. Anyway, Anita yesterday found a few of her favourite things. A pink trike. Charlie can keep the stag. And a bright copper kettle. 
which leaves her £190 in her warm woolen mittens. While Charles's brown paper packages contain a pier cabinet, a mahogany vase... I love it. I'm really happy. ..a Chinese tea bowl and saucer and a curling stone inkwell. Like that. Which means he has £163 and 74 pence left. But will there be the sound of beautiful music at the end of the day? Oh, oh, Charlie, I've had enough of this wilderness. Let's get back in, in the car. Quick, let's go. Oh, oh, that's better. Oh, that's a good life. Dry cleaning bills notwithstanding. I'm a chancer. <laughs> I'm a go-getter. <laughs> I, I hope you've learned I'm quite a wild guy. And I think you're quite a wild lady. Let's just go for it. Yeah. We'll spend the money, we will take a gamble. This is the thing. We just love this exactly. stuff. Exactly. And so they do. Time now to park company, but only for a while. Anita is bound for Kelso, home to one of the area's most famous abbeys and deemed by Sir Walter Scott the most beautiful village in Scotland. First destination today for our grand dam of Scottish antiques is Ectas, where Trisha is keeping shop. Good Hello. morning. Hello, Hi, I'm Anita. Anita. Lovely to meet you. Oh, welcome, welcome. It's lovely to be here. Your shop looks so so colourful and oh, beautiful. Thank you. Can't wait to have a, a look round. Sure, please do. And if there's anything I can help you with, just give me a yell. Terrific. All right, thank you. Amongst the gifts, curios, antiques and collectibles, there's bound to be something to catch Anita's eye. I love these jewellery cabinets and I haven't bought any jewellery up until this point. And this might be my first jewellery buy. It's a rather pretty little pendant with a heart-shaped amethyst or amethyst glass stone. Nice wee thing. I'd like to think that it was gold, but I'd have to check it out. She's a canny one. The clasp is marked with the numbers 375, which means it is nine karat gold. There are no marks on the pendant, so the pendant and the chain might not have started off life together. I think that the mount is very pretty. It's like a little crown. Sounds promising. Anything else? Ah, more copper. I like this Art Nouveau plate. It has been handmade and hand-beaten and hand-embossed. On the bowl of the plate, we can see the little marks which indicate handwork. And this is where the craftsman has beaten out these circles with a tiny little hammer. And I think that it's very pretty. It's £32. I wonder if Tricia will be able to give me a discount if I buy two items in the shop. Well, you can but ask. Tricia, I like both of these items. I think they're sort of feminine mm, items, don't nice. you? Yes. Um, 35 on that, 32 on that. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible if we put them both together to buy them for £40? I don't think I could go as low as that. Um, how about 55 for the two? 55? Mm. Can you shave another little off of it and make it 50? for both. So £25 each. That's right. Deal. Lovely. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You're thank you. £50. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. And away she goes with £140 left in her pocket. Meanwhile, Charles is off 19 miles westward to one of the oldest royal boroughs in Scotland, Selkirk, a borders town built on the wool trade, and that's what's attracting Charles today as he makes his way to the world's only mill entirely dedicated to tartan weaving to meet tartan maker Nick Fidis. Charles, you made it. Nick, you're in the tartan. Well, come in. I'm in the right place. Welcome. Tartan colours and patterns, or sets as they're known, developed in Scotland from the 16th century and were created with the natural dyes of the area that they were woven in. But they may also have had associations with particular clans. Nobody really knows where it started. It's a crisscross pattern, which goes back thousands of years. And for the best part of 100 years, uh, uh, Scots weren't allowed to wear it. Why was it banned? 
because it was such a powerful symbol of identity, of, of, uh, of rebellion, well, really, uh, which is, I think, partly where its modern identity comes from, too. It's because we're, we're a feisty lot in Scotland. Three quarters of a century after the Jacobites were crushed at Culloden, Tartan was rehabilitated when George IV wore it on a visit to Edinburgh in 1822. He was mocked because his kilt was too short, but Tartan was taken up with enthusiasm by the Victorians. We basically kept a sample of every single different fabric that's been woven here since 1947. So I've never managed to count them. I think it's probably seven or 8,000, so it's probably the largest collection of tartan samples in the world. That brown there in tartan terminology we called ancient green. Why? Because it's as if it's been sort of buried in a bog for a few hundred years and dug yes. up and gone, yes. <laughs> gone dark and mouldy. Yes. It's actually based on a, on a sample that was dug up from the Battle of Culloden. Really? Um, uh, which uh, old Mr. Dalgleish analysed and then tried to recreate the sorts of colours using the same sorts of dyes they've used. Amazing. So we call this reproduction. Conventions about colours have developed over the years. So the modern colours are yes. sort of strong and bold. They're yes. called modern because they're Victorian yes. when the chemical dyes came out. But um, what's in the frame over here? It looks mm. quite muted. This is the oh, Balmoral Tartan, woven exclusively for the Queen and her immediate family and I believe her royal Piper is allowed to wear it, but no one else. I think it was actually uh, designed by Prince Albert. Perennially popular everywhere, from weddings to rugby matches, new tartans are being designed all the time. This one over here. I yes. need my sunglasses on. It's so almost like a rainbow of colours, well, Nick. It's actually called the Rainbow Tartan, because right. it's basically for gay and lesbian communities. Yeah. And it's a good example of how tartan has moved on from its yeah. traditional roots yeah. uh, to being something for literally any community. There's no other fabric like tartan in that the way it can identify you and who you feel you are, who you belong to, who you love, from 20 paces. Everything in this mill is made by hand using traditional looms. Time for our very own Sassenach to get weaving now as Carol shows him her job tying on. First of all, you have to tie this on round your waist. Let's go. Hook that through. Yeah, OK, yeah, I'm on. Right. Yarn is joined together thread by thread in a special knot that will pass through the loom. But there's how many threads are there? 1,200. Done it. I've done it, haven't I? Is that right? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> six out of ten. Oh, six out of ten. <laughs> While Charles has been at the loom, Anita's been weaving her way through Roxburghshire to Melrose at the foot of the Eildon Hills, which gave the Romans the name Trimontium, three hills for the fort they built here. And there's something of a Roman holiday going on today. This car is of Italian design. And I quite like that because the Italians always had fabulous design. And you know, driving this car makes me feel a bit like Sophia Loren or Gina Lolo Brigida. Ah, the Dolce Vita, eh? Our leading lady is off to our last shop, Old Melrose Antiques and Tea Room where she can enjoy two of her favourite things. Hi, I'm Anita. Hi, Anita. I'm Greg. Oh, Welcome lovely to, to meet you. Rose. Oh, yeah. Well, this is wonderful. But what was this before? It's been a farm and it's been a dairy, it's been a timber mill, and now it's an antique. Yeah, so there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of history here. All right, well, there's a lot of antiques as well. And I can't wait to whiz round and have a look at them. Certainly. Feel free to look around, and if you need me, I'll be in the workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you. These old agricultural buildings are surely bursting with possibilities. So crack on, Anita. I like this. This is a bar billiards table. Now, this is probably a Victorian one. It's made of mahogany with this lovely inlay of it's some sort of satin wood and ebonised wood. And there's lots of little rows of holes. And I think these would have been used for scoring. I love these wooden pockets for the balls. I'd love to see a maker's name. And there is one here, Piggott Brothers, Bishop's Gate, London. I don't know how to play billiards or snooker. But it looks like great fun. Q purchase? <laughs> Perhaps. Meanwhile, Charles has arrived, and if he's to catch up with Anita, he'll need to get a move on. So there's, there's me, the cock, and there's 
a neat of the pheasant. More of a hen bird, really. Quite rare. But at the moment, pondering a cup of tea. Oh, lovely. Anita! Carol, stop what are you doing? rushing about. Calm down. Play it cool, man. I know this is the penultimate hour of our penultimate leg to dig deep. Have you dug deep? Charlie? No, not yet. I'm, I'm scavenging. <laughs> and by the way, just be careful. Don't put any crumbs on the floor. There's a big mouse. A mouse, Charlie. There is. A just, mouse, don't relax. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> we sleek it, cowering, timorous beastie. Ah, that got them moving. Time to call in Tim and get down to some business. Could I kindly have a look in this cabinet here? Certainly, yeah. I like the pair of... Um, Sugar nips. Are they silver? They are. They're quite lucky, aren't they? Because they're wishbones. Wishbones, yep. This is Hallmark Sheffield 1905. Yep. I quite like them. I'll make a wish. Best price? Uh, 20 pounds. Bigger wish? Um, to a humble man? 18. 18 pounds. That's a really good discount, so I'm going to think about them. OK. That's quite nice, Tim. I like that. It's a small little Vesta stand, so yeah. what you would do is put your your matches in this, and of course you would strike your match down. Birmingham, 1915. Oops. It's priced at 25. Could be best on that, Tim. Um, we could probably do 20 pounds on that. Could you really? That's quite nice. The only issue is the hallmarks are rubbed, mm -hmm. and that will affect Bally. But to me, you can see where it's being used, yeah. where matches have come out, and it just has a glow. I'm almost torn between whether I can almost put some sugar in here and take the two together and, and nip literally out a price for the two of them. If I bought the two together, what could be your very best? Um, how about 32? That's good. And I think, Tim, for 32 pounds, I will say I can't say no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. yes that's Charles Dunn and Dusted. And Anita is taking Greg to the bar billiards board, which has no price ticket. It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> lovely piece of mahogany. Do you know how to play this game? Don't know the official rules, Anita, but we generally just roll the balls up and see what we can score. Can I have a go? I want to have a go. Right, I'll do two, two at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'd love to buy it. OK. I'd like to pay £140 for it. What do you think? As it's you, Anita, go on then. Oh, thank you very much. That's you will. That's you do well with it. Well, I'm going to give you £140, which is every cent that I've got. OK. Let's have another go. Sure. <laughs> Game on. And that's Anita spending every penny. Her piggy is empty. OK, Charlie. Is this something your eyes a bit? Uh-oh. You OK? Ah! Oh, I don't have my hat. I'll have yours. And let's hit the road. Hold on to your hats and time to head for some shut-eye. What a lovely view. Pistols at dawn now as we head to auction at Kinbach in Stirlingshire. In 1715, during the first Jacobite rebellion, this quiet hamlet resounded to the steps of 6,000 troops crossing the River Allen on their way to fight the Hanoverians. Anita and Charles had a capital day in Edinburgh before wending through the borders and north to Kinbuck, disturbing the peace again with a different battle cry. Prophet, here, here we come! Come on! <laughs> Why, there we go. Pop off. There we go. Right. Pop off. <laughs> and our sale room today is Robertson's, a family business which has clocked up 40 years in the auction trade. Charles spent just over half his available cash, £136 on five lots. While Anita emptied her pockets completely, gambling every penny of her £410 on her five lots. Time to size up each other's purchases. I love this kettle on stand, this Art Nouveau, it's organic in Anita. This, I think, is a prized find. But could reach boarding point, it could fizz away, it could make £40. I'm hoping it might be very cold. And what are you saying, Anita? Curling has been played in Scotland since the 1500s, and Charlie has bought tactically when he bought this little inkwell. The buyers are going to love it. 
in this sale room. He paid £30 for it. He won't double his money, but he will make a profit. But what does auctioneer Struan Robertson think? Here, Cabinet, now, it is Regency, so it's got age on its side, but brown furniture isn't doing great at the moment. The pink tricycle, now, that's something I've not seen before. It's a shame it's got the handlebars missing and it's got the seat pad missing. I think it'll do quite well. Settle down now for the off. You've got to make some money in this auction, Time's Charlie. Up. There it goes. And first up is Charles's mahogany ovoid vase and cover. Charlie, you found it in the basement. Yes. You got it at a bargain basement price. Lovely piece here, guys. Who will give me £40? Such a good object. £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, £20, You've made a great start. He's nearly tripled his money there. Nice work. I'm just now opening up. I'm at the end of my week. I'm now just a bit more supple. And I'm running, baby, after you. But can he keep up? Anita's gold and amethyst pendant is next. Heart-shaped. There's love. There's Romantic. love. Romantic. Oh, and there it gets better. Is there love in the room? I can, I can smell it. Yeah, I can smell it. <laughs> He'll give me 50 pounds, 40, 30, 30 pounds. 30 bid and imagine 30 profit. Profit. So profit. Into profit. And imagine 30 pounds. All it then at 30 pounds. Profit. 30 pounds. Sorry. Five pounds profit to Ms. Manning. A profit is a profit, exactly. Charlie. Yes, it is. Time now for Charles's Regency mahogany pier cabinet. You're oh. very brave buying a piece of I'm furniture. A, I'm a man. And a a man. man likes to buy masculine, big <laughs> objects. Lovely wee cabinet there, he'll give me £100. 90, 80, on. 80 pounds, let's go. go. 80 on. pounds. 50 starting. 40, 30, 30 to go. Come on, oh, guys, let's go. Oh, PC come on. For 30 pounds. 20 then. And if I answer 20, if I answer 20, 22. Come on. If I answer 22, 24, 26. If I answer 26. I'm a poor man. All it then at 26 pounds. I'm a poor man. I am now. They think it's all over. Not yet, but it's a bit of an own goal, a £24 loss. I'm passionate for history, and that was history, and it's gone. Forget it. <laughs> Will Anita's Austrian copper spirit kettle sing for her next? I'll bid 120 in advance of 120. Looking yes. good. Pounds. Oh, please. Advance of 120 in advance of £120. All of them at £120. I was so relieved that I didn't lose money on it. Oh, well, it didn't quite hit the high notes. Charles's armorial china teacup and saucer are under the hammer next. 95 is 80 centuries. He's always broken porcelain, Charlie. OK, he'll give me £30. £30, 25, 20, £20. Let's go, come on, come on £20, come on. 15 then. Fifteen pounds. I'll bid ten and advance at ten. And advance at ten. Twelve arm out and advance at twelve. On, and advance at twelve pounds. Oh, it's such good value. Oh. You have five now become pounds. part of its oh. history. Three pounds is better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Never mind. Advanced. Exactly. The show goes on, Anita. Show goes on. Show time now for Anita's pink American style tricycle. How far can it go? And I'll bid eighty and advance at eighty. Eighty pounds. Look at the condition as well, being a children's toy. That's fantastic. Advance in 80, advance in 90, 95, Absolutely 100. Absolutely, you need to buy an Advance in 100 pounds, advance in 100 pounds. All then at 100 oh, pounds. All I can say, Anita, to speculate with that, oh, no. I just salute you. She speculated but didn't accumulate. But will Charles's silver and glass Vesta striker and sugar tongs light the room up now. 30 pounds, 25, 20, 20 pounds start mate. Let's go, come on. 20 pounds, 15 then. 15 bid and advanced 15, and advanced 15 pounds. And advanced 15, 18, advanced 18, 20, advanced 20. Any more? Advanced 20 pounds. All then at 20 pounds. Oh, Charlie. Well, that fizzled out with a 12 pound loss. The auction room can be so inviting, yet at the same time, disappointing. I'm disappointed, but that's life. Oh, never mind. Next up is Anita's Arts and Crafts copper plate. It's the Art Nouveau. It's defined by the femme fatale, isn't it? 
You know, you are. Do you think I'm a bit of a femme fatale? You are my femme fatale. You're organic fluid. What's your wife going to say about that? You're going to be 40 pounds. 35, 30, 30 pounds. 20 start then, let's go. 20 pounds to the mansion, 20 to the mansion, 20 pounds. 22, mansion 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, mansion 30, mansion 30, 32, 34, mansion 34, 36, mansion 36, mansion 36, mansion 36. All then at 36 pounds. 36. Yep. 11 pounds profit on the plate. Nita, whenever you need to live a Scottish oil dream, canvas, I fly beside you, I sit next to you, pounds, and I watch and I admire. It's good. Now, Charles's last item the curling stone inkwell. And I'll bet 12 and I've answered 12. 14, I need to go to 15, not 16, I've answered 16, I've oh. answered 16, 18, I've answered 18, 20, I've answered 20, 22, I've answered 22. Keep going. Come on. 22 pounds. All of them at 22, 24. Go on. Come on. 24 pounds, 26. Advantage 26. Advantage 26 pounds. All of them. One more. 26 pounds. Sorry. Sorry. It's painful, Anita. It's painful. Oh dear. Four pounds of loss. Anita, what do I know about Scottish buyers? Not a lot. I lost four pounds. But I bought something for the home market. And I tried. <laughs> yes, he sure did. Now, cue the last item of the day. Anita's mahogany tabletop billiards board. The item that could lose me all this profit is coming up. If you're having a party, this is exactly what you need. Exactly, 100 Anita. pounds. 90, 80, 80 pounds. Party time. 80 pounds. 80. Pounds and 80. 85. Advancing 85, 90, advancing 90, 95, 110, advancing 110, 120, advancing 120, advancing 130, advancing oh, 130, advancing 130 pounds, advancing 130, all then at 140, advancing oh, 140, advancing 140 pounds, at 140 pounds, last chance at 140. There wasn't really? a price on that. And I had 140 pounds. Uh, and I thought table. that's what it was worth. Okay, 30 pounds. 30 pounds, 30 pounds. Today, it just wasn't worth more. That's her third lot to break even. And despite two small profits, the commission is going to sting. One more auction to go. I'm still in it, Anita. I'm still in it. And you're going to go for it, Charlie. I'm going to go for it, baby. Let's that. go. Let's go. Anita was riding high with £410, but those cell room charges have landed her with a net loss today of £60.68p, and her piggy now contains £349.32. While Charles started out with £267.74, but a mixed bag of profits and losses have cost him £22 and 2p after auction fees. However, that makes him our winner today with £245 and 72 pence for next time. Charlie, there's still one more leg to go and it could all change again. Never over till it's over. The roller coaster continues. <laughs>